In this video, I'm going to cover how to create a land use map using existing data. Currently in this map is the existing roads, the city boundary, and the land use for the city of Arlington, Texas. The first thing that I typically do is to begin adjusting the layers so they visually represent what needs to be seen on the map. I will first begin with the roadways. Typically for a roadway, I go to properties and I make them a dark gray to medium gray. And I adjust the point to 0.5. Then I press apply. The reason that I make them gray and I adjust the line width to 0.5 is because visually they're not as overpowering if they're not black and also if the line weight isn't as thick. The next thing that I will adjust is the city boundary. For the city boundary, I will basically remove the fill and increase the thickness to 1.5. Press apply and then I'll save it. It's always good to save your projects in ArcGIS Pro just in case you have issues with it crashing on you. The next thing I will begin to do is edit the land use parcels. I will double click the symbol so that the symbology tab appears. Now, typically when you double click, it will allow you to adjust the appearance, the feel and the stroke. But what I want to do is actually adjust how the colors are being represented. So I press the back button um, and, if, and now just to make sure that I'm not going too fast, this is what typically shows up when you click on it. There's an arrow here that you can press to go back. And this is where you can actually diversify the categories that appear within your map. So instead of showing a single symbol for all of the land uses, I want them to make a unique value for each. Now what GIS Pro does is it automatically defaults to one of the first columns within the attribute table. However, the object ID is not what I wanted to categorize everything by. I wanted to categorize everything by the land use. So what I will do is right click land use and then I will open the attribute table. When I look at the attribute table, I can now see that it's labeling by the object ID, which is not what I need because it's just, an, it's just numbering each parcel. So as I look across the columns, I realize that land code DE is what I need it to separate um, each land use by because this is where they're designated. So I will go back to symbology and then select uh, field one and change it to match land code DE. And there you see all of the land uses pop up, which is representative of what's in the attribute table. I will then close the attribute table and I will begin to adjust the symbology of the land use plan to match typical land use colors. So for example, I would change commercial to red. I say go back, entertainment, it's also a red. Institutional are typically shades of blue, but not a cyan blue, more of a true blue. Manufacturing and warehouses are more of an industrial land use. I usually put those in colors of gray. Some actually um, categorize industrial as a purple or like a magenta color. Um, however, mixed use, which is 
the next one is what I typically classify as magenta, but sometimes you can also do it as pink. I'll change multifamily to orange. That is a typical color um, that is used. It's a denser residential land use. Whereas a single family will most likely, which is here, will most likely be a yellow. I'm gonna go back, park in open space. I will make green. Office, I will also make a, a shade of red. And sometimes I vary the shades of red to, you know, commercial being more intense and office or retail being um, less intense. So of a lesser degree of red, more of a going towards like a pink color. Parking, I will also do in a gray. Same for transportation. And that could possibly be confusing, but if in your legend you have the grays at a different intensity, then people can decipher between. The um, two colors. I'm going to remove the one that says all other values by right clicking and selecting remove. And as you see, it also removes here. And I'm going to remove this blank one as well. I want to press save again just in case. And for all of the vacant parcels that are either under development, undevelopable, or um, developable, I'm going to just make those a, um, a, a shade of green, and I will make them all the same shade of green. Just want to show that you can also quickly do it here as well. So now all of my land use colors have been identified. However, one thing that I would like to do is um, go in and remove the stroke because the stroke is actually um, very noticeable. And we want to get rid of that, which is the outline is what I'm calling the stroke. And I'm going to go for the really large um, land areas, which are the uh, commercial and the single family first, so that you can see how big of a difference it makes. See, when you remove that. Some of these others don't have as many connections to where it's very noticeable, but I'm going to do most of them as well. Okay, now all have pretty much been updated except transportation, parking, and not too worried about those. So now I'm going to begin setting up my sheets. The next thing that I need to do is create a new layout in order to set up my page. So I will select new layout and I'm going to use a 24 by 36 portrait format. If you're using a 24 by 36 and the city that you're working on is more of a horizontal um, format, maybe it's more long east going east west versus north south, you can also do a different orientation here. But I'm going to pick the portrait arc D and as you see, it creates a page. So now what I'm, what I'm going to do now is place the map inside of the layout by selecting in the insert 
uh, tab, selecting map frame, and you can see here all the lane use colors. This is map one. I select map one, and then I just drag it across my sheet. Sometimes I typically use leave about um, a quarter of an inch to a half inch from the edge. Now, one thing you want to verify when um, working on the sheet is your scale. And so for my map, if I right click properties, I am currently using US feet as my units, okay? And I've selected a coordinate system since this is in North Texas, this is the best coordinate system for me to use. It would vary depending on the area that you're working in. So what I'm going to do is in increments of 12, I'm going to um, adjust the scale of my of my map. And from what I can see, one to um, 3,600 is the best um, in order for me to get the entire uh, full coverage of the city while keeping it within um, the limits. So the next thing I'm going to do is right click activate and bring and center the map within my frame. And then I can get out of activate by pressing this X or this arrow. Now that the map is um, centered, I can add a north arrow. I will um, select this one and then you create a box. And if you can see my box here, the larger you create it, that's how large the actual arrow, the north arrow shows up within your map. The next thing that I'm going to do is um, add a scale bar. And I'm going to use the line scale bar. And I'm just gonna place it here below. Now, what I typically like to do is zoom in to make sure that my units okay, are, are even. And whenever you're adjusting your scale bar, um, you can make adjustments in the ribbon as well. So typically, whenever you select an item, the ribbon will adjust so that you can start to edit it as needed. So if I wanted to um, adjust the width of it, uh, I can make it an even eight inches and a height of an even one inch. I can adjust the font to make them larger. Maybe I want the font to be 16, just so that it's um, more legible. The next thing I can do is bring in the uh, legend for the map. This is another process where you select it and just drag it in. It shows up just fine. Now that I have the legends uh, selected, I'm going to rename a few of my layers just to ensure that the legend reads how I want it. Once again, you can select it, go to format and the ribbon. And um, currently the, the size of the text doesn't show because all of the text sizes vary. However, I'm just going to make them all 16. And then I'm going to create a box. I know others have another way of um, doing this, but I actually like to create a box and um, put in a field and right click my legend and order it to be, bring it to the front. 
and place it on top of the box so that I can edit it as needed if I need to, the legend is still. Also, you can go to um, the Modify Features tool and um, not Modify Features. You can go to the Elements tool and select Show if you want to show the title of um, the legend. Show things that are only visible in the map extents. Okay, I'm okay with the legend. I'm going to move, I'm going to select the legend in the background and I'm gonna right click and group them and then move them here. I'm also going to move my scale bar and my north arrow. I can add a title by going to the insert tab and um, creating a title here. I can say Arlington land use map. And I can put the date if I want. Three or whatever year you're looking at this video. You put the months. It's last a year. And I can adjust the um, size of my text so that um, if I select this row. First, I want to bring it down. I select this row here. I can then format the height of it however I need. If you need to export or print your map, there's two ways to do so, depending on the plotters that you have. There's another video on this channel on how to print or export your ArcGIS maps.